<laughs> Gracie is a creative technologist and artist based in New York, holding a master's degree from NYU's Interactive Telecommunications Program, or ITP, and a bachelor's degree in mathematics and economics. She merges art and mathematical concepts through the integration of software and hardware. Gracie often utilizes sensors to collect environmental data, which she incorporates into her work alongside sculptural elements. Take it away, Gracie. Um, sorry, sorry, <laughs> okay. Hi everybody, my name is Gracie. Um, first of all, thank you all for having me here. It's really such an honor to be talking alongside all of you guys. You're super smart and cool. And thank you so much to the Open Hardware organizers for putting this on. This is my first time here and I'm quite new to the open source and hardware community. So I'm really excited and also a little bit nervous to be here. Um, but today I'm gonna to be talking about my graduate thesis, which was a pseudo random number generator. Um, I think the word random has a lot of different meanings. And when we ask someone to describe what randomness is, it can be a wide range of things, like running into a friend on the subway, or for me, trying to get my stepper motor to work. But as programmers, technologists, makers and artists who use technology in our work, we are familiar with randomness and using random functions in our code. Using these functions to add some flair, maybe by changing the colors of a NeoPixel or choosing the amount of time that passes between events, often we use it as filler data to test if our code is working properly. I can definitely say that I'm a big user of the random functions. And when I first started coding, I was using mostly P5.js and Arduino, and I was using them all the time. I often found myself curious about what the algorithms behind these functions were and how they worked. And how did they come up with these sequences of numbers? What randomness even was and why is it even so useful? So as a quick reminder, randomness is the lack of predictability or a definite pattern. Humans have been using randomness for many different applications and for thousands of years. Ancient Greece, in ancient Greece, they used randomness to elect people into government. In science, we use random samples to help us come to conclusions. We rely on the flip of a coin or the roll of a die to, dice to um, make decisions. And we can use randomness in computer programs, especially for things like encryption. Unfortunately for us, humans are notoriously bad at generating randomness. We are biased and for many reasons, we are biased for many reasons and even if we try our absolute hardest, we can't trick our brains into being random. We often fall for something called the gambler's fallacy, which is the incorrect belief that past events will influence future outcome. For example, if I flipped a coin right now 10 times and it got heads all 10 times and I asked you guys to guess what the next flip would be, I bet the majority of you would say tails, which is wrong because it's an equally 50% chance that heads or tails would be chosen or picked, shown. <laughs> um, we have a tendency to perceive a connection or meaningful pattern between things that are not and often we don't see randomness as random. So we typically rely on other tools and computers to generate randomness for us. But computers are also really bad at, gen not really bad, just bad at generating randomness. Computers love to follow the rules. They're filled with algorithms and are programmed to follow fi fixed instructions and produce rule-based results. Being random and unpredictable is something we in machines, we create are just not. So randomness, so this randomness that humans and computers generate is actually called pseudo-random. Pseudo-randomness is randomness <laughs> is not actually random, but is constructed to look like it is random. Oh, sorry. Um, pseudo-random number generators generate sequences by relying on a seed number and an algorithm. If both the seed number and the algorithm are known, the entire sequence can be predicted, hence not random. 
And they can actually be pretty good, especially for things like shuffling songs on a playlist. But if you need something to be truly random, like generating encryption keys, pseudo-random generators present a problem. Creating a pseudo-random number generator algorithm can be quite simple, according to the hundreds of Stack Overflow <laughs> forums I read. But some generators um, use complex algorithms called one-way functions that are easy to compute in one direction, but not in the other. True randomness is randomness that can only be found in, by things generated in nature. It is the exact definition of randomness. There is no pattern, and it cannot be predicted. And true random number generators random <laughs> measure randomness from physical phenomena like the movement of particles, radioactive decay, which is the emission of energy from, an ionized, from ionizing radiation, and atmospheric noise, the static generated from a uh, lightning discharge. nature, the environment, this beautiful cohesive thing where every single element has a distinct place. As humans, we admire the environment's power and we, try, and we crave to understand how it works by investigating, researching, and disrupting. We may try to project our, pr project our models and algorithms onto it to see if we can predict how it will behave, but we can never be sure because nature is a chaotic system and is unpredictable. We may want to try to control everything about it, often in an effort to predict the future, but we can't actually control what will happen next. We have no control of what's happening in nature, so instead of trying to control nature and predict how things in nature will behave, why not harness its unpredictability? Let nature be nature, be something so different than humans and computers, so original and so random. Why not use the very thing where randomness exists? So in an attempt to generate true randomness, or at least really, really good pseudo-randomness, this is what I did. I used environmental sensor data to attempt to create a closer to true random random number generator. Originally, when I was doing my th thesis last year for this project, I only had four environmental sensors. Um, they were housed in these little acrylic houses. I had temperature, humidity, light color, light intensity, and sound. Um, but currently, well, they're not currently at this running at this exact moment, but they will be running, and other people are also contributing their data as well. Um, the data is then sent to a server via an MQTT broker, in, which is a backend system that coordinates messages between clients and computers. Um, this visualization is made by shifter.io, which is the broker that I'm using. Um, and in the visualization, the original four sensors are represented as the small circles on the outside, sorry. Um, and they're accompanied by their pictures, and the data is represented by the black circles, and it is sending that via Wi-Fi to the broker, which is the circle in the middle. Um, the broker then sends that data to a server, and the server is where the algorithm lives. <laughs> the algorithm is a variation of a linear congruential generator alg algorithm, or an LCG, which essentially takes the seed number and multiplies it by a large number and then adds a large number to it. These two numbers are relatively prime or co-prime, meaning that the only factor that they share is one. Then it's divided by a number, a large power of two, and the remainder is multiplied by pi for some additional randomness. Although I do love math, I wouldn't say I'm a mathematician, so I can't guarantee that this is the best algorithm out there, though it is relatively simple and straightforward. Um, but the hard part about generating random numbers isn't really the algorithm. The challenge is in finding a good seed number. The data coming in from different environmental sensors, sensing different attributes of the environment in many different places, um, seems to be all three. Oh, sorry, I, a, good, a good seed number needs to be unpredictable, unique, and varying in length, uh, or relatively long. So all of that data seems to be all three. Unpredictable, unique, and it can be combined to be relatively long. Um, this is because we can't really control the environment, and also a lot of these sensors create a bit of noise, which makes it more variable, and we also, in theory, when there's more sensors set up, can't know where the data is coming from. Um, and this 
makes it unpredictable and unique. And then by combining all these data points, we can make the seed number quite large. So to make the seed number, the script uses uh, the current millisecond to determine a number between five and 20, which determines the length of the seed number. Um, as the data points come in from the sensors uh, through the MQTT broker, they are added to a seed string um, until it reaches the determined length. And then all of the decimal points are taken out and it's converted to a number and then that is the seed number and that the algorithm uses and it results in a random number. Um, like most other random number generators, the number is resulting is between zero and one. Um, and the random number, or sorry, then the server then sends that random number back to the broker so other clients can subscribe and use that random number, or it can also be accessed uh, via an API call. Um, so then what do we do with all of these random numbers that are being generated? I have spent hours and hours trying to figure out how to present an output to the system that in a compelling and meaningful way to show people how unique and special all of these numbers are. But the truth is that experiencing truly random event is rare and usually unappreciated. Um, the randomness we know typically makes us feel overwhelmed or bored. Um, because we can't find the patterns and we can't predict what's gonna happen next. We can't see how we're influencing the income, it, the outcome, sorry. Um, for this project, I don't know if it's so much about the outcome though. Sure, I would love to say that this generator is the best random number generator ever, but I can't say that <laughs> um, because I actually don't know. And I don't really think it matters because as humans, we can't really tell the difference between pseudo and random anyways. But in theory, the more people that are contributing from different places with different sensors, the more random this number generator will be. And so the community influences the randomness. And we make and we come together to create the chaos. Which is counterintuitive because as humans, we want to see our impact in everything, to see how it all comes together and how not how it all comes apart, but by influencing the randomness to be but by influencing the randomness to be closer to true randomness, the less we'll be able to see our individual impact. So really, you can use these numbers for whatever you want. You can use them to pick your next lottery ticket or to choose the background color of your website. Um, you could also use them, like I did, to create the layout of my presentation at Open Hardware. Um, or maybe you can just watch them appear on the screen like we're doing now. Thank you so much, everybody, um, to all these people. And this is the GitHub repo if you are interested in using the numbers and or sending data to the numbers. And you should, everybody should. <laughs> Thank you.